Good evening, viewers. I'm Gwen Robinson, former president of the Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand. And we're bringing you this evening a dialogue with acclaimed Thai film director, Apichatpong Virasethakun. Uh, before we go into this, I'd just like to remind you that we're bringing this from the FCCT in lockdown. It's part of a series that we're carrying on while we're locked down in the COVID crisis in Thailand. And we have quite a lineup of programs, including tomorrow, looking at the people who are helping in Thailand's COVID crisis, the Good Samaritans evening, a very interesting dialogue. And early next week, we hope to bring you a special event on Afghanistan's crisis with people on the ground and also some veterans and analysts. So please keep an eye out on our Facebook and uh, uh, website for those events. And turning now to the topic of the evening, Apichat Pong, the uh, film director. Many people in Thailand and most international film buffs know the name Apichatpong Virasetakun, even more so since his most recent international accolades at the Cannes and Marseille film festivals. But I think few really know what makes him tick. Maybe we'll find out a bit tonight. Um, widely hailed for his intense, moody, yet meditative feature films, his strong support for creative and political freedom, and his bold stance against censorship Abhi Chatpong, or Kun Jo, as international fans call him, is one of Thailand's best-known film directors, but he's also a writer, installation artist, and many other things. He was the first Southeast Asian filmmaker to win the prestigious Palme d'Or Prize at the Cannes Film Festival in 2010, among many other awards since. Most recently, as you probably all know, he won the prestigious Jury Prize at the 74th edition of Cannes, in mid-July, and days later, he won the Grand Prix in Marseille. Um, the Palme d'Or was for his feature film, Uncle Bunmi, who can recall his past lives. He previously won the Jury Prize at Cannes for Tropical Malady in 2004, and the Prison Certain Regard, sorry about my French accent, for Blissfully Yours in 2002. His new film, Memoria, starring Tilda Swinton as an orchid farmer in Colombia, is his seventh feature film, his most international work to date, and the first to be filmed outside Thailand. Yet, like all his work, Memoria highlights universal themes, in this case, time, death, and intergenerational memory, particularly painful historical memories such as permeated his earlier works all based in Thailand. So tonight, we're also very lucky to see Abhichatpong in conversation with Gong Riddhi, Deputy Director of the Thai Film Archives and one of the country's best known film critics and an outstanding literary translator. Um, so without uh, messing around, I will hand over to Gong. Um, over to you, Gong, who can then introduce our... Oh, by the way, also, can I say, we will be taking questions. So. You can post those on uh, your Facebook page uh, or YouTube if you're watching there. Okay, thank you, Gwen, and thank you, the FCCT, for asking me to to join this conversation tonight. And and to echo Gwen, we are delighted to have a chat home with us. Or oh, Jay, I'm going to call you Jay, right? Because there's there's everyone calls you, and now I've called you for over twenty years. So good evening, Jay, and uh, thank you for. Good evening. Uh, being with us this evening. And before we proceed, maybe you would like to say hi to the audience and maybe a few words on yes. being back in Thailand and after Cannes and, of course, after your Phuket Sandbox experience. <laughs> oh, yes, the Phuket Sandbox. <laughs> That's another story um, <laughs> that um, I, I am really uh, a pleasure um, and honored to be share the story with you here because I am a big admirer of FCCT and what you do. Thank you so much, Gong and Gwen, and behind the scenes, Dev, Kun Dev, who make this happen. And uh, hello to all the people uh, watching right now. And I think also my family. <laughs> okay, Yay. so 
as as Gwen has said before, uh, Memoria is, is Joyce Letter's film, and it was in competition at Cannes Film Festival in July, and it won the jury prize. <clears throat> Uh, and it was one of the most uh, anticipated films of the year for film fans around the world, uh, I would say, especially in Thailand, <clears throat> even though the film was shot entirely in Colombia and, and stars Tilda Swinton. Uh, so today, I believe we'll be talking mainly about memoria. Uh, but I think the con conversation we also touch on on your previous films and artworks. And also, as again, as Gwen has already said, uh, we will try to touch on the context that has influenced your filmmaking and your artistic uh, conviction, uh, such as your interest in the supernatural, in the social and political history of Thailand, because in your film, uh, they always have this political undercurrent running underneath. And, and of course, with Gwen here, we may also talk about the current state of Thailand and, and maybe the role of art in our... <clears throat> Uh, unusual and difficult times. Uh, but we get to that later. For now, may I may I start with the trailer of Memoria? Uh, let, let's watch the, a brief trailer of Memoria and then we'll go over into the conversation. Thanks. It's, um, it's, it's like a rumble from the core of the earth. Bang. And, and then, then it shrinks. Probably 6,000 years old. Oh. Yes. We drilled into our head to release bad spirits. Right, so that's uh, uh, Memoria. <laughs> so uh, let me say just a few things about the film. This is the first film that Jo has shot entirely outside Thailand and entirely in, in languages other than Thai, which is uh, uh, the film is in Spanish and in English. And uh, to me, briefly, my first impression is that uh, the film really expands uh, the Chapong's uh, universe of, of memories. Uh, uh, lost and reclaimed the memories, uh, memories of people, of nature, and of the world, uh, and uh, the memories whose <clears throat> implication we call embodied in the the human uh, sensory system, human emotion. Uh, and of course, the film was premiered in Cannes last month in July. So, let let me let me ask you, Jay, uh, how was it like to be back in the cinema? <laughs> it may sound like a simple question, but because you know you were in a cinema with a big screen and full house audience, and we are jealous because we don't know when we are going to be back in the real cinema again in in Bangkok. So maybe you could share with us your experience of uh, it, going back to the cinema. Thank you, Gong. It was a, a strange feeling, and but strange and also excited and nervous because it's the first time to be publicly shown the film and on such a big screen with um, how many thousand people there? 2,000, I think, in that auditorium. Uh, so it's, it, it's just a, uh, going 
uh, you know, just an encounter, re-encounter cinema in a big way. And I was just, um, you know, I, I just feel moved uh, by the reception just from the beginning and just from the moment that we walked the red carpet, you know, because then I realized that this is, this is a celebration. So there's no need to be nervous, too nervous about this and just enjoy. And I feel the same sentiment with the people around, including the actors uh, and the producers. And we feel like, um, we feel like kids again, you know, to, to experience a gift, you know, of just being able to share uh, this, this work. And of course, with the protocol of Khan, with all these people dressed up, that in some years it could feel kind of annoyed that why why do we have to dress up like that? But then I say, oh, this is a good is is such a nice game, you know, just to honor cinema. Yes. And yeah, yeah, that, that's how I feel, and, 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 and that's also my mission. To can just to see the film in that presentation. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And as we have seen in the trailer, this is the kind of film that you need to see in the cinema. It would not exactly. work at all, or it wouldn't be the same film if you see it any other way. You know, the sound, the way you decide the sound and, and, and the image, everything. So it's such a privilege to, to be able to premiere the film in Cannes. And, and... It, yeah, it, it, it plays differently on the laptop, and i always against that. When people watch my film, I always say it's not my film. <laughs> if they watch it on the laptop. <laughs> right, especially Memoria is, is about sound design and about this immersive experience. Yeah. Had, had Tilda and other actors seen the film before in Cannes? Uh, what, what was their reaction? Yeah. She she saw and others saw in this laptop in a small <laughs> screen, which again it it you know, for me too I saw with you Gong in Thailand right on yes. the big big screen but yes. uh, the the feeling in Cannes was different because of this um, the shared energy of the people and also the you know, the, the quality of the projection. And it almost feel like to us, the Tilda, me and other people feel like watching the film for the first time. And, and I feel that, okay, this is our ship and it's, it's, a, it's a nice one that, uh, for me, and I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. Yes, and uh, uh, after the film ended, uh, there was this already fabled uh, 13, 14 minute uh, standing ovation in the in the room. And by Khan standard, that is quite mm -hmm. exceptional because usually it's three or four minutes. <laughs> and now it's, uh, four, uh, I think 14, right? 14 minutes. We, you can see, you can go see the clip online, right? Somebody record the whole, the entire 14 minutes of the, of the standing ovation. And then, and then came the moment right. when you spoke to the audience and and then this phrase came up long live cinema <laughs> the long live cinema moment it's it, it, it is such a powerful uh, about to cry it's and, and it's a short phrase that is layered with uh, multiple meanings and as you must have known it went viral mm. And a few days later, the face appeared as a wall graffiti during an, well, an anti-government protest. Uh, so, so long live cinema. What, what inspired you to come up with that, and why, why do you think it has touched court with so many people? It was just spontaneous, spur of the moment that I said that. You know, first of all, it was such a intense experience as a filmmaker to to have such a. A beautiful reception that how receptive people were and uh, somehow this year can you know after the screenings of every film there's the 
they ask if the director want to say something beforehand. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, I don't. And, you know, I talk to our coordinator, you know, that, okay, because you can choose not to say or not to say, yeah. Uh, but then the, the clapping didn't stop, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thierry Fremo, he just came and then hand the microphone to me and he said, sorry, uh, you have to do this because this is this exceptional moment, you know, for, for him too. So I, you know, I, I understood and I just was overwhelmed and I was thanking people and looking up, you know, in the end I looking up at all the people on the balconies and to to, to pass or to 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 die yeah. with this shared experience in the same place, you know, in the dark. And and that that's why I just say, you know, innocently it's just long live cinema. It just yeah. let it alive. You know, especially I, I just feel the threatening, you know, because of the COVID, you know, because festivals started to go online, people start to kind of train themselves to watch, to enjoy movie online, but to the point of maybe uh, it's, it's quite harmful to, to, to the industry, especially the theater, the cinema, you know. That that been for hundreds of years, that you know. So, I, I, that that's the reason behind us. And and then it was another surprise came the next day when uh, the word has been vibrated and replicated in Bangkok, right? And then I realized that I, I didn't, you know, because we we have we we use long live something, no long live something but then long live cinema was not really common in thailand so yeah that that's a, uh, uh, something that that i don't know how i feel about it but i just just feel that uh, people need you know especially in at home here we need something to hold on to you know some good news or some something that you can share uh, this idea of optimism Exactly. Yeah. Being a double. Yeah. Because, yeah, as you said, long live is, is... Because I once wrote an article and I and I used the phrase long live metaphor and then they didn't want to run it. <laughs> I don't know why, but no. long live cinema sounds much better. So, yeah, let's leave it with long live cinema. And I'm sure there will be a T-shirt with long live cinema on Bangkok Street Market very soon. <laughs> So, Gwen, Gwen, would you like to, to ship in? Would you like to add something at this point? Oh, well, I guess I don't want to deflect from um, the lines you're pursuing about the actual work and the thoughts behind it. But I do think since we're talking political and, as you said, it suddenly got picked up by the, by the mob, it, you know, appeared in protest. So it does highlight your role, Kunjo, or rather your influence and your commitment and uh, your stand on the political front and how your work has uh, really barely been screened in Thailand. It's, it's just extraordinary what a figure you are internationally and yet you barely, have you, I mean, how often have your films been screened in Thailand and will Memoria be showing here? And what have you got to say about the direction now? Uh, of censorship, the government. Um... Oh, we're jumping there soon now. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Tom, did I... I... sorry. No, no, I, I'm happy to we'll come back that. to it. It was not that, you know, I don't think I'm a political filmmaker. Um, I just make my film maybe in an unconventional way in a conventional society. So uh, naturally, it, you know, this clash um, arises and I I just do you know just react uh, as I supposed to and 
for me as a shy person, I was not really think that um, to make film equals uh, an activist activity or or I do it not because, how you say, uh, wanting to change society. I just want to express, you know, my memory and where I live. So, but that said, you know, there were clashes with the government authorities that um, I and my friend took action. Um, yes, so, so still I, I, how you say, uh, I'm just, all the things that I do, it's just fighting for, for, for me and my peers to be able to make film that we, we want. Yeah. Mm. Just, just to give a little bit of background, I think Abhishek uh, Joy uh, was is referring to an incident in I think two thousand and six or two thousand and eight. Two thousand and six. Two thousand seven. Seven with the film syndromes and a century. Right. Uh, didn't go through the censor yeah. because they ordered him to cut four four scenes uh, from the film, and and Joy refused, and then that led to. Uh, to a big industry-wide protest. Uh, there's a campaign by filmmakers and, and, and young and old filmmakers and film uh, organizers, film festivals. All of us, even film students, we came out with the campaign uh, Free Thai Cinema Movement, and which demanded the amendment of the, the old film law from the 1930s. Uh, and that led to well, it's a long story, but let, that led to a new film act uh, passed during the National Assembly appointed by the, the coup, the, the coup makers of 2008. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and we, so now we have a new film law, but still censorship uh, is still uh, allowed by, by this law. So we have a rating system now, but but the authorities still have the, the, the power to, to cut or ban films mm -hmm. still. Uh, that, that is what uh, Shapong experienced himself and, 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 and mm. this, this movement. Because my, my goal was that film regulation should be handled by the industry ourselves. You know, the government doesn't have anything to do with that, you know, and government just had the role to support, um, not censor. So the ultimate goal is to to be able to manage and to, you know, with the theater and to to have our own rating system and recommendation and government cannot censor film. And so for, for me, I, I, I push as much as want to have the X-rate movie, uh, especially porn cinema, also in theater. And that that's maybe beyond too far for many. Uh, but but still, in two thousand ten, Uncle Bunmi, who who can recall his past life, his film that won the Palm Door, that was released in in, in cinemas in Thailand. But then right. in in the next film, uh, Symmetry of Splendor, that was 2016, 15? 2015. Symmetry of Splendor, uh, Vishat Pung decided not to release it in Thailand. Uh, but then this time with memory, I, I believe you have a plan to release it, right? Yes, when we uh, <laughs> depend, on the, depend on the pandemic situation. And, exactly, um, yeah. We hope to launch the film after Colombia um, and in Thailand it will be hopefully in December. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me get back to Memoria and then we, we can, we can uh, talk about politics in, in Thailand later on. Uh, so, okay, this, you, you shot the film in Colombia with Tilda and, and, and all these Colombian actors and also a French actress in it, Jean Baliba is in it. Uh, right. Maybe you can say a little bit about Colombia and the trip that started it all, and also maybe, what what did you see? What did you experience in Colombia that, you know, turned the switch on and made you say, okay, this is where I'm going to shoot my film. I was always fascinated by, 
Latin American culture and also the Amazon. You know, I you know my uh -oh. uh not, not me right yeah well do you want to maybe show uh we could show oh he's back with us yeah, yeah. um so, okay, so show your, yeah, i think the, your internet. the amazon uh, can you hear me well now yes now it's good yes yeah so so for me uh, over the years just traveling to to Latin American countries, I I just feel, I know it, it almost feel like very familiar, like home and the way people uh, being very casual and the whole uh, culture uh, quite um, chaotic, chaotic, that remind me of home. Uh, so it was quite, um, I say a dream to be there. Um, then in 2017, I was invited to Cartagena Film festival, uh, but that's in the north of uh, Colombia. And then I traveled. I was traveling the country for three months afterwards. Um, and the moment that I was going to Bogota, arriving, you know, with the massive mountain and the heavy, heavy cloud, I was thinking like, mm, maybe this, this is it. I uh, know the the place because it's such a the looming that is like I was in awe of of the landscape and how people how people deal with nature and then later how people deal with uh, these traumas um, that somehow can can link uh, maybe parallel to home in Thailand, yeah. Uh, so gradually during the travel, and I started to write and to to talk to people um, take a lot of pictures and and and, and it, it's here yeah mm. and yeah so but but another reason is also that uh, with Tilda you know we've been friends for years and wanted to make films a film together and um, so we try different countries at option, you know, including Thailand. But I feel that we need a, a third country, the country that both of us feel both of us right now, so that we can open our senses and uh, and for us uh, not knowing, you know, this idea of blank slate and just just to absorb, you know, just to accept that we don't know. You know that that's a beautiful thing to to be in this day and age. You know, um, so it's in the end uh, we learn a lot and and almost like feeling like we have another family there. Yeah. So you mean shooting in Colombia took you out of your of your family elements? Uh, it forces Correct. you and Soda to be in a totally new environment, and that that. That's important to you as an as an artist, right? When you when you need to yeah. to be to feel exposed. And and the fact that in Cartagena in two thousand seventeen they they make a tribute for me, and in the night of the tribute they they show this really beautiful clips of my past works, you know, montage, and I was choking inside like. Part of it say, "Oh, I'm I'm officially old now," and also <laughs> feel it. It felt like a funeral to me. Yeah, you have a someone paying a tribute to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it, it felt like okay. It's a uh, it's something that the end of one chapter, you know. So it, it's really a symbolic moment. I felt that oh, maybe Colombia, you know, this this place or this region could be a new chapter. In, in filmmaking life. Yeah. You, you mentioned this uh, historical parallel between Colombia and Thailand. And mm. to be more specific, maybe Thailand's not East because you set uh, some of your films in, in Isan, in the Northeast, uh, your feature films mm. and short yeah. films. And, you, and you, uh, in, in those films, you talk about uh, the Cold War history and the... And, uh, Past about the insurgency in in the region, uh, 
Um, mm. So Colombia also share the same history of violence and struggle. Uh, and right, that, right. That's the Colombian people, and, 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 and the same as the, the uh, people in some of people, some of the people in Thailand experience, and and, and how history yeah. became a part of the memory of the place. Uh, so maybe you can say a little bit about this parallel you you mentioned before. Yes, I, I feel that in Thailand and Colombia, there's something light about life, you know, just, you know, the casualness. Um, but at the same time, memory and history is so heavy. And both of us has this issue of, you know, um, inequality, very big gap of income, and also started with maybe similar issue of this inequality and the, the power distribution, the land distribution, you know, starting as early as the 20s and also peak in the 60s, you know, for both of us, you know, and, and in Colombia it was uh, with the also repression of the, the communism as well, you know, that this ideology of communism was really attractive to people because because it was about equalness, you know. And so, but then Colombia branched out in, in different ways, you know, with, with the FARC and, uh, you know, and with the right wing uh, paramilitary. So, so all this conflict, you know, generate from similar situation and, and, and branch out in different ways and in Thailand as well. And I'm really curious about how people deal with that, with this kind of, conflict and of violence um, and and how we just uh, how you say just keep it in the back of our mind but just live on and enjoy you know so that that's um, that's I, I feel similar exploration there um, yeah because in in Cannes at the red carpet you and uh, two Colombian actors you know unfold mm. this uh, SOS which is, I believe, yes. this is a, a symbol of protest, street protest in Colombia, right? Mm. It, it was a cry for help, you know. It's a cry for uh, for acknowledgement from the community about the plight of the the people, because um, you know that there's up and down situation like in Thailand, and they have uh, a massive protest um, last year, right? And uh, result in deaths and you know police brutality you know the same way but maybe much worse than Thailand mm. um, and the goal is very similar too you know to to reform the government and to 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 make it country more fair to everyone yeah. mm -hmm. but but while you were shooting in Colombia the situation was was normal right there was no protest no but when did I, you shoot? Two, two years ago, right? 2018, yeah. I think. 2019. 2019. Yeah. 19. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it, it was... Uh, apparently to me, it was quite peaceful time. Uh, because um, for the past 10 years or 15 years, Colombia has become booming, you know, in the economy. Because after the, the peace agreement, it's been signed, it's and, you know, yeah. Even though it's a uh, quite problematic to some, but it was, uh, you say, trying to trying to look back at the situation and try to find an agreement, and try to move forward. So there, there's, I think, the booming also in the economic sector and also in education, um, and also in entertainment. You know, uh, one of the reasons that, uh, you know, we, we shot there is also because of the incentive and how the Colombian government helping uh, huh. the movie help, help a lot, oh. you know, government in private, you know, um, and to, 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 how do you call this word, to give back the money spent in Colombia uh, to generate? Rebate. rebate. A cash rebate. rebate. Yeah. Yeah. Cash rebate, as much as I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong, with 40% or 35, which is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and also, it, it also helping the, the local uh, uh, industry as well. Yeah. So, I, I found it re really uh, smart 
and also mm -hmm. also you know thinking about home again thailand you know we can also lead in that way in terms of uh, cross cultural um, you know or exchange we are talking about politics in colombia but in fact if you well when we get to watch the film we we understand that in fact the film doesn't really talk about politics at all and as i said before no. as in his as in your other films the the politics is underneath it it's is humming beneath the surface and and somehow you you understand it once you 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 immerse yourself in the experience of the film because memoria is actually okay i'm going to give you uh, a brief summary of the plot <laughs> Uh, for the audience who may, may not be familiar with the film, the memory is a story of this woman, Jessica, uh, played by Tilda Swinton, who she's an expat living in, in Bogota, and she wakes up one morning hearing this strange uh, explosive sound, like a bang, a, a big bang mm -hmm. sound. Uh, and, and then and the sound, uh, you know, like haunts her. And she sets out trying to find, to, trying to locate the source of, of this sound, and it takes her uh, outside of Bogota into the forest and the mountains of Colombia. And then, you know, she goes through a sort of mini adventure uh, that, that somehow in the end reveals or, 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 or uh, the, the, the source of, of this bang sound. So from this description, there's nothing about politics at all. But, uh, but again, if you see the film, you understand how Bishat Kong is able to 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 weave all this historical perspective and 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 his obsession with memory and not just the memory of a person but the memory of the world probably into this uh, into Jessica's experience uh, and yeah, yeah right it, uh, it maybe, was... maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> I I know you're gonna say something. No, I'm, I'm going to ask about the bang sound because, again, ah. it's, this is what uh, people we talk a lot about after they've seen the film. It, it was How what I experienced. Yeah, and you can Google, you know, it's called <laughs> exploding, head, exploding Head Syndromes. Explode, exploding Head Syndrome, yeah. I, I didn't know about it. I, did, I wasn't really care what it's called, you know. Was a quite a peculiar situation when you, when I wake up in the, or, or in the same my state of waking up uh, in the morning, I heard this loud bang, you know, bang, and but but it's not a sound, it's it's the sensation of sound in the head. It's not in the ear. It's in the brain, or maybe on the inside, in the center of the brain and 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 it was not traumatic I, I to the point that it that just kept happening every day that I was almost waiting for it and you know lying there listening and and after a while I, I realized that I could control it I could control this when it's coming when it's going how big it is and and I had a pleasure in that. Uh, a strange, strange uh, situation, pleasure and sensation. And it, it, it followed me during my Colombian trip as well. So naturally, I, I put this uh, in the film and, and then it became the, the main theme of the film. Yeah. But uh, I, for the whole film, Honestly, I didn't know what I want to achieve or what I want to talk about. You know, it's like my other films. You know, the process of making. You know, it's, it started from feelings. Yeah. Uh, but in memoria, in, in spe especially because it's a, maybe it's a unfamiliar culture and land, it was. It's like a, a mystery to me. Even after we finished doing, I was. I don't know what what I want to say, but I know the feeling that I try to find, you know. And I have to thank you know Lee Shatamitakun and 
Britt, you know, uh, who is my editor and my sound designer, respectively, who, who really try, and I, I was such a bad explanation guy, you know, I, I tried, you know, but uh, then we found, we, we took quite a while in different, different configurations, you know, to, to until I think I found it, I, I feel, you know. Um, that, that sound, but, you mean, to, to, to figure out that sound? The, the motif, or I don't know what it's called, motif, the, the heart of the film, you know, as a person, what, what this person is like, you know, what kind of temperament he or she is, you know, I, I had no idea, you know, and, and it, it, it getting more, you know, brightened, more, more clear, you know, um, to the sound mixing stage. And, and I think that the most clearly moment was in Cannes, right after the screening, right, the moment after the screening that I say, oh, okay, this film is ultra, ultra um, heavy. Um, it, but, but heavy in a, in, a, in a way that it's about also acceptance of the heaviness in life. And, and also it's a celebration of, you know, acceptance of grief. And, and, and I feel that somehow it resonates with what's going on, you know, for the past year or two. Yeah. Um, and 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 then people also told me that as well. Yeah. So Grit uh, and the uh, uh, post production guys working in Thailand, mm -hmm. and and they yes. always they have been collaborating with Jay for 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 twenty years since his first film. So just to clarify. Sorry, Gwen, are you? Asking oh something? yeah. Um, well, it was just continuing on from this. Um, very intriguing uh, description of how you got into it and developed the the ideas. But you mentioned before the, that some of it was uh, tied to your long friendship with Tilda and then you were saying you had discussed ideas, maybe Thailand, um, but the ideas uh, going to Latin America and you developed this idea. But was part of the concept, did you have her in mind? Is that part of the idea? Did that help? I mean, she's a very, yeah, she's a, she's not just an act, actor who says her words, right? So was that part of the inspiration? Did it grow organically with her involved as well? Um, how much of it was uh, to do that? 100%. I... I wrote this film with Tilda in mind, and oh. as you say, um, she she's quite unique, you know, and how to make she kind of her blend into Colombia. That that's a, a challenge, um, and also to, um, to to create this entity that after you watch the film for a while, you will realize that she's not real. You know, and, and that's how I discover, you know, her character. And she represents us. She represents our desire, our, you know, yearn to to block some memory, you know, and in the way she walk, the way she actually turn her head. So all of this, you know, Tilda has worked really, uh, really hard. Um, before she came to to Colombia, you know, um, first of all, uh, she started to learn Spanish, and then she started to, you know, what she could do before arriving was about appearance. You know, she started to uh, grow long hair, uh, keep it longer because that, but that's quite um, something hard. If you know Tilda because she liked to keep it short and play with her hair. So I was so impressed when she's from time to time she sent me an update of picture like Joe, look this long now. Joe, look this long now. Um, that that's uh, that's moving for me. Uh, and then once she arrived. Uh, she's just immersed in living uh, in in Bogota, and and to the first day 
of uh, costume, you know, costume try out uh, because we tried with Photoshop and we, we thought this would be fit her, but in, in reality it was not, you know, they're not. So we have to start all over again. And, and she just did this, you know, she just like opened her arm wide and he just said, just do whatever you want with me. So, and for me, I found this grace um, really um, beautiful and also admirable, uh, this fierce spirit of Tilda. And in that first day, I was thinking, that's why, that's why I wanted to work with this woman, because she has no fear and she just, just like, craft so much. Um, mm. and, and she proved like every day of the shooting it's, it's, a, it's a gift for, for, for everyone and, and, and just a, such a joy I, I feel also like working with Jenjira or with Sakda in Thailand you know because of this dedication and this idea of family working together um, that, that make it uh, my fear of this new territory become, you know, not so because of the team in Colombia. It was, it was such a, a, a very casual, and I would say, laid back team. Yeah. Wow. So in other words, there was no other Jessica. It was, it was her or nobody. Yes. Mm. I think maybe there are a lot of uh, film students, film people watching us. Uh, and one question I've been asked, but of course I cannot answer because I'm not you, is that, uh, <clears throat> you know, for example, in Memoria or actually in your other films. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought we lost you. Uh, how much of what we see on the screen is improvised and how much is scripted. Like for example, with Jessica, the Tilda Swinton character, how did you discover this character in the script while you were writing it or on the set when Tilda was there and you were working with her? Uh, well, I had a script and I even had a storyboard and, uh, but the change came when we start to rehearse in Bogota, you know, script reading and, you know, acting out and sometimes mm, it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel uh, lighter or, or right, you know, so, so rehearse and then I change the script again. And then during the shoot, uh, we have several takes, you know, this, that, that, and different tryouts. Yeah. So um, I don't remember which one is improvised, but so it's a mixture of those um, style. Yeah. Mm. If I can leap on I just, the, there is, the, um, oh, sorry, the, after, keep going, keep going. No? Oh, okay, I, I was just saying that there, there was a long scene, okay, I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there was a long scene with Tilda and the, and the fish, fisherman, a fish scaler uh, by the street, that is like the, the, like the centerpiece of the film, and, and, and that is amazing because you really don't know if, she heard all of this before, or it's just, you know, happening right there by the stream between Jessica and the, and the fisherman. That, that is just one of the best scenes, uh, one most wonderful scenes I've seen in, in, in years. And, and I really hope the film will get to be shown in Thailand and everywhere soon, be, simply because of that scene. Mm. Wow, thank you. I, I also feel that that scene was quite a turning point for her as a character to question her her existence. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, when were you saying something? Oh, yeah. It just brought up, since we're on this, uh, yes, indeed, there are a lot of film students watching this and we've got a lot <laughs> of people in Latin America watching as well. <laughs> so there are a lot of questions, but we'll have plenty of time to come to those afterwards. But there's one particular one that t d directly touches on what we're talking about. And this is from Edo Gottlieb, who says, um, 
you know, how how different you've worked also with non-professional actors uh, um, many times. Um, so how different is it for you working with real professionals like Tilda and um, non-professionals? Um, do you know? Mm. Do you know at the stage of a script with which actors? In the case of Tilda, you said you almost made the film for her and with her. But uh, do you often know which actors? Do you keep actors in mind when you're mm. uh, with the previous works? Well, I, in this point, I have to bring uh, Tilda's word that she said that she's she don't she doesn't consider herself actors or professional actors. And I didn't get it. After a while, I, I, I did get her because it's um, the way she works. Again, like reminded me of uh, when I worked with many, many, um, not many, but I mean the, the cast that I had in Thailand. It was the sense of, you know, a collaboration that is not, only about reading script and walking to from one spot to another spot. It's about framing and how she or Jan Baliba or uh, Juan uh, operate. You know, they they consider framing and also uh, consider themselves, especially in Tilda's case, as one of the workers. You know, to contribute to the flow. You know, the film. You know, she could. Uh, it's almost like she's one of the lighting person, or you know, as a costume. You know, all all this mm, together. You know, she study um, each take. You know, on a monitor, and how to uh, synchronize things. So, so for me, it's it's it, it's kind of familiar way of working as well. Um, and and also, uh, Tilda also said to me that uh, Joe, uh, if you work in another kind of system, I I think she meant Hollywood system. She's not going to be like this or other actors. I don't know about her, but maybe she, she mentioned uh, that maybe uh, actors. Maybe that's what you mean in your question. You know, professional actor uh, will not be like her, you know, in in terms of accommodation and trying out things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I really need because, uh, as I mentioned, I didn't know what I wanted, you know, in the film. I just, the idea is just to do it and to find out together along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what, what really fascinates me and I believe what will surely generate much discussion and, and academic papers <laughs> uh, is the status of memoria as, you know, a film of the world or what, a multinational film, or to use a more, more academic term, transnational cinema. Uh, because why film and cultural products uh, are still very much tied to the concept of uh, national identity you know, you have a Thai film, a French film, an American film, or, you know, a Korean uh, TV drama. Uh, the fluidity and the blurring of, of, of mental and cultural borders has long been one of the characters of international cinema, especially now at a time when we cannot just always classify a movie or, or a piece of music uh, according to the, to the nationality of its maker. So... You know, like in your film, in, in Memoria, this is so so clear, that this quality of, of, of being transnational or multinational because the, the film was funded by the 10 countries, 10 producing companies and grants from 10 countries, and then it speaks English and Spanish. It has uh, French and Colombia and, and, and British actors. And then, uh, you know, it was shot in Colombia, and you are Thai. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, was con it was conceived and written and shot by a Thai, like you and your cinematographer, Pisong Siyum, who is a Thai. So this, this you know, because for me, it, uh, from the beginning of your career, your, your films have always displayed this, this, this subconscious tension 
of something that belongs to one place, but also to all other places. You know, uh, an artwork that is deeply rooted in in the soil of its homeland, but but and yet it transcends this that geographical and cultural cultural frameworks. Uh, uh, I hope you can follow what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say that with Memoria, all of this is coming to the fore. Like this is a film that cannot be easily classified or or mm. categorized. Uh, so you know when when we when we were discussing your film among our friends, we said, oh, can Thailand send this to the Oscars? <laughs> like, can we call this is a Thai film, or will the Colombians? say oh this is a colombian film i mean it, it doesn't really matter for me because it's your film but but maybe That's you would you would like to address this a little bit mm, this quality I, of, I, of it is unintentional but i'm glad actually because i always a bit bothered you know by when going to festival and having people to perceive the me or the film as uh, a representation or representative from Thailand, I said no. It's it's not. I I, I in Thailand there's so many um, how you say voices and different ways, and I, I don't want to be tied down, mm-hmm. especially when you go to Japan. You know, with it's almost feel like you are one of the horses <laughs> in the horse racing or the Olympics. You know, it's not about that. You know, so. so uh, but for Memoria, I, I just feel that it's about going to a place and to feel the energy place and try to express it. And and this place has something that familiar, you know, to me that in Thailand has, and that's all, you know. And um, yeah, so so. But but I think in the future when we look at movies or entertainment, you know, this idea of nationality would maybe feel obsolete, you know, in, in a few decades, no? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think it's harder and harder to, to distinguish, as I said, an artwork according to just the passport of, of, the, mm-hmm. of the filmmaker or the, or the musicians or the fashion designer. Right, if you're in Thai, you know, you, you, because especially film, you know, it's a combination of, of different influences and arts and, you know, and, uh, and uh, me staying in Chiang Mai from the, I'm from the Northeast and I have certain memory and another. So what is Thai film? You know, the, for me, it's, it's, it's not a valid question. <laughs> you know, what, what is a national, national cinema? Yes. Uh... Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's as I said, the terms that, that the academics use is trans transnational, but I would prefer maybe transcendental <laughs> quality of, of your cinema because you know, because it, it matters where your film is set and which language the characters speak, but at the same time it doesn't really matter <laughs> on or not that much. Mm-hmm. Because it, it it's it, about the craft, it, no? Cinema. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's about it's about how you put image and sound together in the end. You know, it's yeah. language and the way you dress or the architecture. It's they are illusion. You no, know? they are facades. You know, but in a sense, it's about edit. It's about lighting. It's about how how this crafted. You know, which is universal has been put together. You know, it's a collective. Um, a collaborative work. Yes, yes, it's, it's really good to hear that. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Gwen, would you like to ship in here, or would you like to move on well, to, we... to... No, I, I think that, uh, I mean, you, you kind of have brought out uh, some, some great thoughts through these questions, mm-hmm. Kong, and there's so many other good ones as well. I guess one I'm that's really struck me actually is given everything you've said uh kunjo uh there's a a question here from james marshall that if you could actually make any movie you wanted any theme any budget any actors you wanted what would your dream film be (laughs) wow Uh, Wow. i think i've already made it you made it. <laughs> this I've, is I've your already, dream film. 
because yeah i was correct i i was of course like filmmakers you know that we always thought that the more budget the better you know um but in fact no uh, it's like life no there's no money is enough you know you 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 when you think that way you always need more and more um but uh, and then there's a lot of pressure coming with that you know so for me i prefer something that is uh, still uh, still give me joy in the making and and memoria at other film is a testament of, of those joy yes uh well given the situation in colombia and in thailand uh, i i can put this elegantly mm. or i can be quite blunt about this okay let's try the elegant way first <laughs> uh, what's the role in your in your view what is the role of cinema and art in a world plagued by uh-huh. well of the virus and by dictatorship of all stripes uh, that's the elegant way of putting it but in the in a more direct way uh, what do you think about the situation in thailand <laughs> Well, what can I say to make it different from what hundred um, millions of people already said? You know, uh, for me, you know, when you create art or film, you know, as I say, it's uh, like you are creating a person, no? Uh, and this person, I think, you should create it with something honest, you know, to yours. Yourself to to have this person as honest as possible, even yourself, you yourself, even though yourself in real life you you cannot be honest, but at least this guy or this girl uh, uh, should 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 operate without fear, and mm. and to be able to tell his story, you know, uh, without censorship and. Because especially when we talk about Thailand or many other third world countries, we we our story, our history, was always shaped or told uh, kind of in unbalanced way, you know, by the state, you know, through propaganda, you know, um, and in many instances, filmmakers and artists um, unknowingly create their work, you know. As part of this propaganda, you know, because the way we were being, you know, indoctrinated to to believe, you know, in the state narrative, you know, so that's why I talk about honesty, you know. Um, of course, if if you really believe in in the state narrative, you just do it. You just do it honestly, you know. But there should be a room, you know, for artists to to do something that to to voice. Their own views, you know, in their own angle, you know, and and you have to understand that this person that you create, you know, will outlive you. You know, it it will be there will be a record, you know, of how we live and how we feel in in our time. You know? So, so that's all I I can say. Yeah. Yes, I think. Oh, well, if I can, you... uh, sorry, sorry, go on. So, Go on, Kong. Uh, briefly, what you just said uh, about the official narrative uh, of history, the, the the state narrative. I think this is and 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 the attempt to break away from it. This idea is is shown quite clearly in Symmetry of Splendor, your previous feature film in, from 2015. But unfortunately, that film was never officially released in Thailand. Though I think it's it 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 speaks so much about Thailand. Uh, during the past seven years, mm. living here, living here was like you are on top with many layers of stories, uh, and not your stories. You know, you have to memorize in school. You have to um, really behave. You know, and and actually, these stories also create fears and and uh, submission. In in 
how how they make um, um, how you say being uh, being part of the scheme that actors you know you being part of the supporting actors actually yeah mm. yes sorry Gwen is that what you were yeah you no were related I think uh, slightly related to that there is a question from um, uh, Pong Panu Pong Kajong Kikun uh, about whether, I mean, it's great news that Memoria will be shown in Thailand, but do you have any concerns that the film would uh, be subject to censorship or face um, any resistance in any way? Uh, particularly because, you know, there's maybe certain reflections or messages about the situation here. Oh, no, not at all, because I feel that Memoria is uh, I think it's quite universal, and and yeah. to many people, it's a Colombian film too. You know, it's it's more Colombian, and uh, how how you know the landscape play out, and yeah. So I I don't see anything with censorship in Thailand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say that, that means we can all look forward to actually seeing it, and possibly in a cinema if uh, if that's even. Uh, uh, if, if that's even conceivable at this point. <laughs> I, I can say that the film won't have any problem getting a release here. It's it's Tilda Swinton, come on, the ancient one, right? So, <laughs> and, <laughs> we, should, we should we should would want to have a problem with, with Tilda Swinton in a in a Thai, in a film directed by a Thai director. <laughs> and I, I think probably because our conversation uh, has this political undertone. Uh, so that might make some people believe that, oh, Memory is a political for political film. But as Jerry has already said, that it's not a political film at all. It's a film about, you know, memory and history and, and the landscape, the sound, and uh, everything we discuss is totally underneath the, the, the surface. That's sure really scary. I mean, the, the fact that we, we are talking about whether this film will be censored, you know, I mean, are we China? You know, it was, <laughs> come on. Well, some of your earlier comments would suggest, some of your much earlier criticisms of uh, censorship here and your stand against it would suggest almost at that level. In <laughs> yes. You've yes, suffered exactly. at the hands of censors I, here. I just feel that we, we are such a very, uh, how you say, a, a country with contradictions, you know. I I, I just say that because it, it feels quite sad, you know, to talk about, you know, whether the film will pass or not, and and whereas we call ourselves democracy, you know, and and I'm said many times that I, if you want to change the country, you know, from democracy to something else, you know. It, just, just do accordingly, you know. Don't, don't disguise yourself under this democracy banner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, now that we are on this trope, uh, I remember last year I was I I, stopped, I bumped into you, Joy, at the uh, at the BTS in Saladang. Huh. You were coming back from the protest <laughs> with the oh. camera and a microphone. Uh, all by yourself, no, no team, no crew, just, just you observing the protests. Uh, so, and you, and you, and you said something to me about you, know, it, it, you, you, you were fascinated by the way this huge crowd move in such a, mm. such a very organized and almost symmetrical way, or something like that. Maybe you can. Are you are you planning yes. to on protests or are you shooting? Putesh for yeah. your installation. Like like this picture on the screen, you know, this picture was from my camera, uh, from from the film yeah. footage. Um, for me, like you, yeah, I was so fascinated and just to be among this energy of people, young and old, especially young, who who want change. You know, is something very new to me, and I was. Uh, impressed by how they organized this in the center of this, of the capital and to how to mobilize you know 
people with the traffic and how use how to use the motorcycle as a team and how to coordinate. This is not an easy task, and it's done in a non-violent way. And 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 the demand that that demand really reasonable, you know. So so yeah. obviously, you know, I I attended several of these gathering and document, you know, filming. Yeah. So you mean are you so, going to do something with that uh, film? I have no idea. It was it was just an impulse, and I feel that it's important. And I also met many filmmakers there too, filming, and I I know that. Maybe many of them also didn't know what to do with the footage, but it's it just feel as a as a filmmaker, it's almost like a duty to to record those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Historic. Historic, yes. Yeah, yeah. So may I ask, I if I may ask one more. Um, I I suppose that. That leads. That does lead to the question. Well, two questions actually. One's uh, you're getting one from the past president of the FCCT and the current president of the FCCT. It's about what comes next. You've made your first, you know, international fi well, film filmed outside Thailand that tackles a theme uh, that is well, it's universal, but out it's set outside Thailand. So, what do you follow that up with? Um, also, um, as Panu says, your past films have featured so beautifully the landscape of Isan, uh, northeastern Thailand. Do you have any upcoming project in the future to explore that kind of theme in the future? Are you planning any more project in Thailand in the northeast? And that comes from Panu Wongchoam, the, the president of the FCCT, and uh, the other ones from me about what, what you follow this up with. I know that's a, that's a horrible question for most um, artists. No, no, thank you uh, for asking. It was, I think, experience with Memoria was such a really impactful one for me, and I felt I need to follow, uh, continue that path to explore, and and I want to really be able to speak fluently in Spanish. Uh, so in that region, I I will explore more. Um, and at the same time, uh, this is a dream, uh, and it's not about you know matter of funding or anything. It's about uh, having a kind of a collective unit to to make a, a, a documentary at home in Thailand. You know, because I think we lack uh, quite a good records or you know a good documentary. Um, uh, in locally, yeah. uh, whereas we have so many talented uh, directors and and the, the uh, uh, talents in the film industry, so but with the issue of censorship that we talk about, you know, I think we, you know, hardly inspired by the youth, you know, that they push, they mm. push the limit, and for us, mm. you know, what do we do? Uh, I feel that. This documentary network, it's, uh, I wanted to make it happen, you know, to, to make quality ones um, with artistic um, uh, side of, of looking at things, yeah. Uh, and, and other than that, I've been doing installation works and artwork, photography, which uh, revolve around the Northeast, yeah. And one of them is coming up, you know, I'm just finishing it uh, this week in a, in a gallery uh, in Bangkok, yeah. Is this the uh, minor history? There was a question from Nicholas Hudson Ellis about the your upcoming exhibition. Uh, a minor right, history. it's called it's called a minor history. Yeah, and the show is yeah it's a six month long and no actually eight months long and and uh, it divided into two parts and we're doing the first part. And uh, a minor history is, is started after Memoria. I think it when I was doing Memoria, I, I there's some instances where I missed home, and I feel that minor history is the way to to go back, you know, to trace the Mekong River, 
uh, that I always do for the past more than 10 years, you know, looking at the river and traveling around it. So in uh, February and March this year, I, you know, we have a, we have a big spike in COVID, no? And during February, March, it's, it died down a bit, so I could drive along and visiting Konkan and also uh, Nong Kai, Nakhon Panom, Bukdahan, and Ubon Ratchatani uh, to document especially your youth and the, what I call the remnants, you know, of, of the old beliefs and also of something unspeakable as well, you know, about the murder of the uh, political activists, you know, that deal with the Mekong River, you know. So, so the show is touching, touch on, on those elements, yeah. Actually, it was supposed to open this week, as I understand. But given the right. situation, it has to be postponed, right? It was supposed to open on the 19th, which is like three days away. But of course, it's not right, possible. Right. Yes, we, we almost finished, though. And uh, I think you can make an appointment with the gallery to, to go. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's quite a strict because you know what we are dealing with. So, so maybe with the strict uh, also test to test uh, before, you know, with the mm. COVID test. Yeah. Would you like to tell viewers uh, what gallery and so they can perhaps try and make a request? Right, it's called 100 Tonson Gallery. It's in um, uh, Lang Suan uh, and area, and Lang Suan and Wittayu Road. It's a fish that's from the FCCT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all locked down at the moment. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what about... The, the exhibition in France in the the long name Villeban the Institute at Villeban. Oh. Yeah, and if that, I can was... add to that, but one one uh, viewer in France said, "When is your film coming to Paris?" So just to throw in, if you're talking about okay. exhibitions, I think they open in November in in France. Yeah, September November. Um, Memoria, uh, right? Memoria. 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 Um, and in in Villeban, you know, just right by Lyon in France, uh, I had a quite big exhibition at this art center, um, the Institute, it's called IAC, you know, Institute of the Art uh, there, and uh, it's called Periphery of the Night. So it's a combination of my past uh, short film and installation works that deal with this line between um, awakening and you know dreaming and also with life and death and all this murky line and and the show itself is is, is very dark and it's, it's like a labyrinth that you go and you're supposed to get lost um, and discover bit by bit of this light and memory mm, yeah so mm, for listener if, if you are there in France please you know catch it you know, Would you bring it. that to Thailand? Uh, actually, I I wanted to. You know, they, they, there's some places that um, can can host it. Yeah, because I, 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 I did in my EM, no, in Chiang Mai a few years back, and 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 that feels similar too. But I feel like there's a need to update with with some newer works. Now that we are on this subject, how, how would you shuttle between uh, filmmaking and gallery works? I mean, it it sounds so natural to you because you know the the still photos you shot on the set may become an art exhibition while you were working on a feature film. How do you manage this this uh, you know dual tracks of of gallery work and and cinema work? Well, in the end, it, they are about image, right? And sound and just oh, moving images. So, and I was starting with experimental film, you know, what, two minutes, five minutes, you know? And I, I so I still feel like a second nature to, to make films, you know, short films. 
and installation. Actually, the experimental film was was my key, you know. But then, with the experimental venues dying, and many artists and filmmakers shift to to museums and to gallery, you know, uh, in the in the late nineties and two thousand, you know, and I was among those who flow into uh, the art arena, and yeah, so it's, it's been like that and the process of making was really fim- similar you know but in a way the artwork was more i would say it's more abstract and the audience has to be more active you know um, the, the the point of reduction of information was more in the artwork and and it's it, it also gave me a lot of freedom to to be something super personal yeah mm. yes but, but anyway either the yeah, gallery exhibition or memoria feature film it depends on how soon we can resume our normal life and how soon uh, <clears throat> cinema and art will become a part of our life again even now that we are shut out from everything without the without enough good vaccines to to make sure everyone is safe and and, and that we can resume our Right. Used to be. Do you think we can do that in December? What do you think, when? <laughs> well, I think I mean, it's anyone's I didn't mean guess, December this um, year. You know the way things are going. I don't, I think your your guess is as good as mine. But um, mm-hmm. you have to do what you have to do, right? You have to keep going in the belief that uh, it will happen, and you clearly are just continuing. I mean, you know, wanting going ahead with the exhibition you've got other ideas and plans you seize the opportunity when you had the chance to drive have that long road trip so um you know i suppose anything can happen and you can adjust right i presume you're always thinking how you can adjust to a situation i mean what do you think if if you know covid continues exploding what would you uh do how would you work if you no, I'm. I'm will still continue to work, you know. And I, I feel that it's, it's, it's about now. It's about our us, helping, one another, each other, right? You know, because the the talk tomorrow, right? Is it tomorrow about the, the work of the, volunteers, people, you know, yes. in the FCC? Yeah. yeah. So so yes. that that is a really relevant, you know, thing that's going on now. How, how um, the the task surviving is come to the hands of the people because right. many people you know just don't do their job yeah so. well yeah it's and actually... so many amazing stories of people who are helping i mean yeah. all these got you know restaurateurs who are just giving all their funds and staff to uh give food to the um hungry and people providing shelter and things so it's uh, yeah. Out of adversity I mean, comes that comes this, inspiration. This, this actually brings us to uh, Joyce, uh, another speech at Cannes when he went up to receive the jury prize. And mm. he spoke that night about how the government of Thailand and Colombia uh, must wake up and start working for the people. And again, that went viral. <laughs> Uh, your short speech uh, went like everywhere. It was translated into Thai, and, and, and it was quoted by all these news agencies. Uh, and because you know this call out uh, phenomenon, but but for you, you've been talking about this for well twenty years. You you didn't just say it in Cannes, but 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 you seize the opportunity to use the biggest stage in cinema to say. What needs to be said, and and, and I, I I really I I'm really touched by by that speech. Mm-hmm. Again, it was it was um, spontaneous. You know, of course, I I, I plan, uh, but it was really quick thought that I say it's important to say in that platform, um, and in Colombia was, I think they start to wake up. Mm. Uh, because I talked to Colombian friends, and um, there's a there's a mail coming to your house. You know, like okay, you are in the age group now, 50, 40. You are 
your time of vaccination, you know, you go to this place at this time, you know. Yeah. And I was thinking, why can't I do this? Why can't we do this in Thailand? What's what's so hard about it, you know? When when you have this database of people address and when you do an election or whatever, you, you know where people live, you know, with names and everything. What's so hard about it again? Mm-hmm. You know, to s- systematically, you know, make, doesn't how to not make it like a chaos, you know, and create mm-hmm. more infection through this chaos, you know, how to properly, you know, um, yeah. So, so I think Colombians, like from talking to people there, is like waking up a bit <laughs> and better, you know, situation, and they they have uh, vaccines, and but but for us, it's it's still. Um, in this business of silencing people, which which I found, I found personally disgusted and disgusting. And mm. how, uh, why, you know, you know, I think many people ask the same question. That, of course, people are upset. Why don't you just talk, you know, instead of bullets, you know? Is that the way, you know? And can can you be civilized and and just talk to people why they're upset? Of course, you know, you just or at least pretend to pretend to listen. You know. Mm-hmm. I think that that uh, also extends to the question from a viewer who also quoted your quote, but said, "So, what will it take for that to happen? Then, what's your sense? What would it take for?" Um, the government or the establishment to talk to the people or to change the system? Well, that I think we've been doing what we can at the moment, you know, just to each other and uh, also to demand. I think on the street is it's maybe the one of the ways, you know, but inevitably people have to go on the street because of this situation. You cannot blame the street, you know, mm-hmm. suffer. It's not that true to, to be there. Yeah. So people risk risk their life, their health to, to be wow. there, to demand what they're supposed to have. So I, yeah, I, I don't know. But I just feel that there's a, something seriously um, wrong uh, with, with the, the leader. Right. And so for, for something to change, do you think it would have to come to something like some conflagration, apocalypse, some, you know? I, I don't know. Maybe we can ask for help from Colombia, no? How do you do it? <laughs> well, talking about bad situations, if I can, maybe if you don't mind, Konga, there's a, a, a few questions, but one no, from no, no, uh, Lakers. Go on, go on. Please go on. Uh, okay, Please. thank you. Uh, one from Lake Shankar, uh, which actually fits with a, a couple of other uh, queries and also my curiosity, but she's picking up on this terrible situation in Afghanistan and saying a noted female Afghan um, filmmaker, Sarah Karimi, uh, says in desperation that the start of the Taliban or the comeback of the Taliban does mean the end of cinema there. So oh. she's saying long live cinema seems as tough and impossible there or possibly tougher and more impossible as long live democracy. And it has come up and you were on Twitter as well um, uh, responding uh, to one of our members, Phil Robertson's uh, point and also... I would like to also know, but uh, in Myanmar as well, it's kind of like the end of cinema uh, for now. And um, uh, I think uh, in particular, yeah, some yeah. directors' guilds have, have called for the release of filmmakers, Mong Tain Dan, uh, who's been detained, and also Ma Ain't, uh, I suppose, amongst right. other creative right. people, and including a lot of journalists, uh, and I'm sure in Afghanistan now. So... Um, these are horrific situations. Um, you know, do you think that's sort of the end of creativity and cinema? What can be done? What are your thoughts on on that? No, I, 
I feel that is, I don't want to say that, but it's natural, you know, when the power feel threatened, you know, they need to get rid of you, and mm. and it's really risky when you are in in those area, and here, you know. So, I honestly didn't know about the situation. You know, the filmmakers uh, in Burma just been called out by Phil, and. I, for me, it's also not about filmmakers, but about anyone who who's been detained or who's been intimidated. So it's it's heartbroken, and at the same time, I feel that to shout and to to call out on social media, you know, once it's been done for so long, it. it um, it, it could be back. It could backfire. I mean, we're dealing with something, someone that is um, in fear, you know, and could do anything, you know, like a, like a, a threatened animal. So, uh, for me, I, I answer few, and I, I said, you know, it's, it's. I have my own way, you know. So it's maybe not public, but you know, I just work behind uh, through the channel that I think uh, can work or may work, you know, uh, because sometimes I feel quite frustrated or almost feel like a duty just to, to shout out, and, but it doesn't go anywhere because we like, we're talking, we're shouting to the wall. Uh, so so I, I'm just trying um, what, what I can, you know, through to this ambassador, that ambassador, and then how, and to learn actually, uh, to how to reach and how to, to really reach there, you know, um, to create real impact with, with the generals or, yeah. Mm. But I don't know, it, it's such a, it's such a, I mean, you know, we're dealing with, you know, it's, it's Myanmar, Burma. <laughs> yeah. If I may add, if I may add, when? Uh, sure. uh, like the situation in Afghanistan, in Myanmar, and in, I, I'm speaking as someone from the Thai film archive here, uh, that what the Taliban is doing and what the generals in Myanmar are doing, they, and actually what dictators everywhere are trying to do is they're trying to, to wipe out history. So it's not just uh, it's to destroy history. And you know the film archive in Afghanistan has been in serious trouble. Uh, the 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 film heritage of that country uh, has 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 been in a dire strait for for a long time because of this because of the political situation and 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 it's possible that that Afghanistan will lose or maybe it has already lost so many films, uh, you know, old films, classic films from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, uh, because of the the, the the chronic instability of, of that country, and especially now, and in Myanmar as well, uh, the the film archive activities in Myanmar have been was active. You know, uh, after the military government uh, was ousted uh, many years ago, but now uh, experiencing a lot of uh, trouble. So. Well, what 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 filmmakers like Abhishek Pong and other filmmakers are doing now is very important. Not just because they they are documenting what's going on right now, but they are documenting history as it as it's happening. Like the protests, like street protests in Thailand that that Joy has been filming. And as he said, that there are many Thai filmmakers that I know who have gone out almost every day to shoot uh, footage of the protests. And, mm -hmm. and many of them, many of them have, well, I know for sure that one of them has already finished a film, a documentary film, uh, mm. based on the protests, uh, talk more, but I don't think he can show it anywhere in Thailand because mm. it's just, you know, it's just too real, too, mm. it's just too honest. And honesty is not, you know, honesty doesn't have a place you know, on, the, on the cinema screen in right. Thailand or even on the TV screen. So it's very important 
you know, these documentary filmmakers who are working so hard to to make sure that that this moment will outlive us, mm. will 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 remain and will be kept in perpetuity. It's yeah. incredibly think, well put. Uh, yeah. okay. Go on. Um, that, that's I, really I just, important. How how do the how the media or how the physical narrative have been erased, no? And for me, what equally important or is also how the next generation will remember, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I read these excellent books by Emma Larkin, uh, uh, The Portrait of Burma, and, and it's such, such a poignant portrait, you know, of the regime, you know, how, how they change you know, the memory of the people, you know, the next generation, they change the street name and they change the way people read and the way, what kind of information you you expose to, you know. So so I think what's scary is how people remember their country, you know. And 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 you know, in that sense, you know, we I don't know, I feel like everyone is almost like a filmmaker now with social media, you know, we record and right. we you know, we just do our recording, you know, just to make sure that this memory are not wiped out. Yeah. Oh, surely, yes. And that might, you know, you said that sometimes you feel frustrated, you're shouting at a wall and uh, uh, there's that. And there's that kind of maybe domestic internal censorship or repression or worse in other countries. And... Uh, this point you made about cinema and making films that really should be seen on the big screen. But surely this whole internet age and streaming and even the fact that we're all sitting in different places and getting the message out, uh, you make a film, even if it's banned here, uh, or even, you know, I think Kong's point about destroying an archive, that's different. I mean, that's actually destroying something that can never be shown again. But um, Surely, in a way, even your films, if if it if it comes to it, and you have to see them on a laptop, you still get some kind of message out, um, and that should surely give some hope that you know they can't silence you these days, even within borders. I guess as long as you've got internet, does that mean something uh, from that oh, point that's of view? It's, it's so it does make sense that 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 now the government or just not long ago trying to try to monitor and to I don't know the word to install something from to the internet right to to try to limit or try to monitor us and and I think right. personally I think it's already there I always I always think every time I line that someone is reading my text, you know, here. Does that change any of your attitude or what you might say or who you might say it Some, to? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Hmm, I just feel that it's, uh, yeah. But but I also know that um, it's, it's not the case with many other people, you know, and also, uh, again, with the young generation who who's just so open arm about this, this transparency. Yeah. yeah, which is the way you've got to be. Should I, we've got uh, about 20 more minutes um, and a lot of questions, I think also from quite a few film students. Um, so perhaps Please. I could, yeah. And also Kong, you yourself as, I'm so glad you said that about the archives because that uh, was such an important point to make. And we we mustn't forget that Kong here has probably seen more more Thai films than almost anyone here. And you can, you can compare and contrast across the decades of periods of also great repression, coups, hunters, you know, um, and probably draw draw lessons from periods of extreme political repression. Uh, and you said yourself, uh, and Kunjo, you might also be aware that there's an incredible flowering of Thai film this year, Thai contemporary film. 
and you were saying yourself, Gong, that so many are, are showing in international festivals, and I think you've blazed the trail, Kung Jo, with, with yours, but uh, it's very encouraging, and it means, I suppose, a younger generation of filmmakers. So maybe you could uh, comment on that, but also a question here from um, 20th Century Manot. Is there anything you'd like to say to young Thai filmmakers? And if you want to comment on that, on that uh, question of repression and creativity, because it seems to me there's a lot of contemporary Thai film coming out. No, I, I, I just say, uh, just don't wait for support. I think just because when we talk about film, uh, we talk a lot about, oh, I don't have money to do this and that. I think uh, it's no longer an excuse. And I think many young filmmakers are hesitating because they, they want to make a masterpiece. And uh, But I think maybe you can shift the perspective, you know, just, just think of it as uh, something that you can make as a habit, just like writing, you know, uh, just like doing diaries, you know, to shoot something, uh, something really close. You don't need to film, you know, car explosion or anything, just shoot your cats and dogs, it's okay. So shoot, shoot people close to you because you remember, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, uh, glorified image already about, about not people, you know, about someone um, that is, you know, not common life, you know. Uh, so I think, what we need is to celebrate our life, you know, to do something that we know of, you know, uh, to, to, to shoot uh, people talking, your friend, you know, it's, it's almost like make, make a habit of camera being part of your daily life, you know. And, but maybe now it's, it's, it can be a, a bit action movie with the rubber bullets and <laughs> tear gas around, you know, but yeah, that's really pandemic and plague and yeah, that that's like action for you. So so you can you know just just be again like those thing I talk about being honest with this person that you're creating. Yeah. It's incredibly good advice. Um, actually, on on films, uh, Leka Shankar also asked, can you tell us about the other film of yours in the group anthology film that was screened at Cannes? I, I'm not oh. familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It, uh, it was called Night Colonies, and it um, it was made during the pandemic, the, the real lockdown, and the producers asked several filmmakers to to express, you know, the, to share what the situation was like at home. So I basically filmed my bedroom and to to film with a lot of lights and to attract the insects into it um in the, uh, so it's almost like to see the the life that we we, we didn't got to we didn't get to see or we, we ignore them you know and the preciousness of of life you know other lives besides human you know so so that's the film and also coupled with the you know uh, the rising of the demonstration the the youth you know that's come and go like wave in the soundtrack yeah. Oh, so it's kind of a documentary in a way. In a way. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're stretching the boundaries of what a documentary is, really, with that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I will see if we can show that film in Thailand. And yeah, that that. The well, thing that's that exactly the example you were you're advising young filmmakers. You probably made that with no budget, no actors. No. Yeah, just shoot what you have, you know. Yeah. And, and if if I if I may add a little bit, that, that your film is called Night Colony, right? Night Colony. But Night it's Colony, part, yeah. It's part of an ensemble called The Year of Everlasting Storm, right? Right. The Year of the Everlasting Storm, yeah. And it consists of seven filmmakers from seven countries shooting. Uh, during the lockdown, and a Pichat Pong section is called Night Colony. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen that, but I would love to. Yeah. yeah. 
That sounds fascinating. Uh, but I was thinking that's exactly your advice to the young filmmakers. Uh, actually, another viewer, Amy Schroeder, is asking what... You must get asked this sometimes, or rather a lot, but what films would you say have inspired you as a director and filmmaker? Oh, over the year, there's so many, um, from Spielberg to uh, Fellini to, you know, Andy Warhol. Um, it's, um, it's for, for me, it's, it's about, it's not a particular filmmaker, but it's about this stream of history that everyone can influence one another and you are part of this river, you know, just to, to pass along some kind of world views or, or craft, uh, craftsmanship. Yeah. So, yeah, but don't listen to me, you know, you can pick your own, your own uh, directors and that your own appreciation because I, I always think that, you know, what I do, you know, people, called a so-called art film um, and it's supposed to be better but it's not you know you just you just if you like action movie you like action movie you like commercial movie you just 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 be honest with with what you do and perfect your craft <laughs> which one by Spielberg let me ask Joy which, which <laughs> film by Spielberg <laughs> I think I mean there's so many the the the, the one from my childhood was uh, the third encounter of the third kind. Oh yeah. Okay. The encounter. Of... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then I I like a lot the the one with Tom Cruise, the the War of the World. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. War of the World. So uh, I might uh, run through very quick, try and squeeze in. Mm -hmm. Actually, you've got so many questions. So they are on the uh, Facebook page. So you might want to look at them uh, afterwards. Uh, I think you've got some fans in Latin America too, but the, there are some uh, quite uh, not technical, but there are sort of questions also about filmmaking. But here's one from mm -hmm. Hataira uh, Pauntap. After, you know, after people watch the movies you make, um, what kind of change, or I presume it's what kind of change would you hope uh, would happen in their minds uh, or their, their thoughts after watch? I guess I would add to that <clears throat> question. I am personally curious um, who you feel you're making the films for and this leads to another question from Leka Shankar, which is uh, what language you wrote the script for Memoria in? Was it in English uh, or in, so you were saying about how keen you are on Spanish and there was a lot that was mainly Spanish. Um, so I guess that's a multiple question. Sorry, it's, a, it's jumped a few places, but can you follow that? Yes, I, I wrote it in, in English. Really, in in most of my film, I I wrote it in English uh, mainly because um, I think I have my Thai version in my head, and the English was basically to find money, and it's the oh. quick quickest way to send to the producers, the funder, uh, and um, I I just feel that I I just made the movie for myself. Uh, I don't want to sound kind of uh, pretentious, but it's, it's really a self uh, discovery and, and and how you say a journey. That, um, but I know that there some people might be able to synchronize with what I do, mm. and that's what I talk about honesty. You know, first you have to be honest with yourself first. If you think in that person, that audience, you're not gonna be, you're not, you cannot satisfy anyone, everyone in the end, you know. So, and also being in Cannes is the big lesson, you know, over the years, I've been attacked, you know, I've been booed and people walk out of the screening, you know, it's, it's really a lesson, you know, to say that in the end, you just need to make the film you want to see. Yeah. Right. And don't, well, you're doing don't it for yourself, to but 
and obviously and you do want people also, to watch it. Yes, but but also you know growing up here also that there, there's a lot of you know in the school they were always talking uh, about very logical way of doing things you know to memorize thing and what what you will contribute to the you know and and for me that's a bit frustrating you know the point of being a filmmaker and living and trying to get money from Ministry of Culture, for example, you know, you have to write like a report, like what do you think this movie will, what do you want to say in the movie and what this movie contribute to society? And for me, that's, that's really is, is, is the most damaging question from Ministry of Culture, you know? Because it's not your business, you know. It's, you don't need to make filmmaker lies to get money, you know. That you know, sometimes you don't have a purpose, you know. You you just want to express and and maybe this movie uh, value of the film, you know, the comedy, the silly comedy with ghosts, with something have their own value, you know. What I do has my own value, you know. Each film is valuable as a record. For society, you know, so when I'm confronted with this question, you know, what the film will contribute, you know, I feel like what a, that's the view from nationalistic, you know, view, you know, and and it's put the frame into the mind of the artist, and that that kind of kills also creativity and honesty, you know. So we we really need to get rid of this, and you just make film you know, without thinking about the goal, but just thinking about the, the now, the, the awareness of now that how do you feel now and how do you channel that into your work the best, you know? Mm. So that that's my answer. Yeah, I think that's incredibly useful for, for film students as well. Um, another film student-ish question, how shall Banu Shali? Uh, did you work on the sound design prior to shooting or did it evolve on the edit? And I guess that might apply to other films of yours, but Moria. Uh, yes, yes, we, we built a lot uh, in the post-production after the shooting and the sound design came. So uh, we recorded the sound as much as possible, you know, the ambience and everything. And because I... Sound uh, is also a character, main character in this film, especially Memoria. Yeah. Right. Kong, do you have a question? Yeah, just to just to follow up on the on on the part that Joy said, you wrote the script in English, but when you film, you actually you were actually on set in Colombia, and most of the dialogue in is in Spanish. Uh, actually, right. I've talked. To Distance on port, and, and he already told us about it a little bit. But maybe you can add your own experience on. I imagine that it must be difficult because you you studied Spanish before, but you didn't really understand everything that is being spoken by the actors on in the scene and on the set. And how, how did you manage that? You know, how do you know that? Okay, this is okay. Okay, or, or we do it again because it's not okay. I, how, how did you manage? That? I don't. <laughs> So I, I, you know, with the help of the language coach and with the team, you know, everyone's really uh, trying to help. And, and of course, people know my works and what I want to achieve. You know, that that's the main task of, you know, to communicate what you want. And and that um, that's the thing to 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 uh, like the costume or like the props or something. When I was in Thailand, I understand. You know, I know where where I can find this chair, where I can I find it, this clock on the wall, you know. But in Colombia, I had no idea, you know. So I have to to lose myself of control and just to let people do their work and I focus on the main characters and also the rhythm of the film. And I view 
Spanish as music, you know, just just to listen like music and the rhythm and the the pauses, you know, what's what's not spoken, you know, that's also important, you know, the 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 silence, yeah. Well, if it's okay to go a bit over time, uh, Kong and Kunjo, yes. um, we did have that clip, and in fact, a uh, yeah. viewer has uh, specifically asked about. We were going to show another clip um, from the film from Memoria, um, but we're worried we're running out of time. It's only yeah. how long is it? About three minutes, Dave. It's only three minutes. It's yeah. minutes. I'm sorry, I forgot to, you know, find a way to put this because. No, it's okay. I actually yeah. love it as well, and so <laughs> we will show it in a minute. But Matthew Hunt asks you. One clip from Memoria went viral here, uh, the magic trick with the handkerchief and uh, the little poem being recited. Why did you select that scene to be released as a preview clip? And I don't think everyone's seen it, so we might actually show it. Should you answer the question after we see the clip? <laughs> OK. OK. Uh, Dave, our wonderful tech maestro, Dave Foster there, who's put together this whole show and all the... Photo montages, uh, we'll show the clip now, if that's okay with you. I think I'm going crazy. You are. And me too. It's not the worst thing to be. Composed a poem. A poem of the sleepless night. Beyond the petals and once furious wings. The air gasps at its fading shadow. And? That's it. So why did you choose that? You see what I mean about silence, you know? <laughs> this it's pause. very Japanese. The whole movie, the whole movie was like underwater, you know, everything was a bit slower than normal. But um, um, I, I, um, the poem, you know, it, it's something that I wrote and and Tilda said it's, it's it's such a bad poem, you know. <laughs> so that we we had a poetry place, you know. You know, I I was working with Tilda at, for a new poem, but in the end, I I choose this bad poem of mine, you know, uh, for this take because that's the point. It's a bad poem, so. Um, I didn't because, think it was that bad. I, I quite liked it. <laughs> you do, because in in the way you know, the, it's the only time when you when you know this character of Jessica. You know that she's you know she start to review something odd about herself and about the, her humor and her, her you know dead humor. Yeah, and. But the handkerchief was from again from you know everything come from the working with 
you know, process adapting. And there's, then I realized that um, one of our team, the production team, uh, is a musician. And his dad is also one of the top musician, uh, magician, actually, in Colombia. So I said, hey, <laughs> tell me. And then, you know, showing, you know, please show me the magic. You know, he started to show. And then I say, oh, let's put let's put one in, in the film. And that, that, just as simple as that, you know, and I picked the colors. Um, so it was it was just uh, that's why I say the joy, the joy of making film, you know, just to to adapt on the spot and to find you know, this thing that you want to remember. I think I think the people in Thailand focus on the color of the handkerchief from one color mm -hmm. to another. I think that's the point of discussion <laughs> after the clip was released during Cannes. But well, I was uh, the, dog. The, the whole time I was looking at the dog. I mean, how, how did you get it to do that? Like for three minutes? <laughs> no, that, that's the that's the dog the Kihau, there's so many stray dogs and not stray mm. but they are around and people you know as a community raised them you know together and when we were there also we kind of uh, gather you know chip in the funding from the from the crew to support this mm. as well the cause of dogs there and mm. and uh, me and many people until then love dogs so much so so it follow us around and say okay let's let's feature this guy um, <laughs> so, right what, what about the color the color of the handkerchief that's as i said that's honestly the, uh, the part honestly of the day. <laughs> I, yeah honestly i didn't think about it i didn't intend to you know of what people that's what i thought specul <laughs> speculated or anything yeah no i i was my mind i don't think so i think my mind was in colombia at that time it was yeah not here i think we we lost gwen is is are you here gwen oh okay it's okay i think yeah you mentioned the dogs uh there are, there are quite a few dogs in the film actually one that follows tilda around uh, during the early scene and this dog uh -oh. so that's not in the plan right it's that that's that's the plan because it that's the plan. I, uh, elaborate a uh, script because uh if you see the film each scene involve many long takes so yeah. so how to make a dog go from that, that, that like the whole the whole i don't know five ten minutes take Probably, yeah. so so it's a train. It's a train dog for uh, for 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 quite for quite a long time to to get him to to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Many people this... people thought that it was a computer graphic. No. The dog. The dog. Oh. Yeah. Really. No. Again, it's so difficult talking about a film because we don't want to reveal too much, and we 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 described a few scenes, but of course. You can rest assured that we haven't revealed anything about a film and the experience of watching it is totally different from listening to us uh, discussing a few scenes. And so, again, coming back to the point we, we started out, it's really important we have to see this film in a cinema and hopefully we get to see that uh, as soon as possible. Uh, you know, if, if Colombia is releasing it, France is releasing it, it's... It, it's such a shame that it, that Thailand has to wait so long for, before yeah, we get I think, but, but but we have to accept the fact that we are we are in a different speed, and mm. I think uh, with the with the pandemic situation here, uh, the way that we deal with it is 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 quite slower than others, you know. Mm. So yes. so I think December hopefully could be uh, yeah, and I. Um, the Thai producer part really want to make a premiere in Chiang Mai, uh, ah. in the outdoor, <laughs> outdoor, outdoor screen too. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. but of course that's not definite, right? It depends on the situation. Right. 
Okay, so the situation, yes. Uh, and you also shot this film on film on 35 millimeter, which is quite unusual for, for a lot of films these days. It's, it's quite insane, you know, to shoot. On, um, but I, I like insanity in, in filmmaking that, you know, it's a big challenge of, mm. you know, because the labs are closing down and there's no more lab in Colombia. So every three days, there's this person or a producer herself came to Mexico City to process uh. process the film. And then um, I think two weeks later or a week later, we got the so-called rushes. Rushes. Yeah. Not rush and not rush anymore uh, to to see what we shot. You know, so so it it forced me to be to be really trustful of mm. the film you know, of, of the Sayompu Pisong, the DOP, uh, whom I have to say that I I I really admire this guy. You know the way that he he dedicate to the film and how he put all his sensibility to to the film um, because we started together you know in the year 2000 2001 that we shot the three years. Three years yeah and it's, it's also his first film you know mm. and and now you know he was shooting with many international productions and mm. and then when I work with him again, you know, I saw the change and I feel that, oh, Pisong, you are become like a master now. And, and I really appreciate, you know, this trajectory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and last I heard, I think he's working with Ron, Ron Howard. Mm -hmm. Should have yeah, been. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Hi, Gwen, you're back. I yeah, I'm sorry I disappeared. It was my t my computer just practically blew <laughs> up. Um, so it must be telling us something, which is we are running over time, and I feel so so bad that we haven't uh, got to quite a lot of the questions. Um, but you can see those questions, Kunjo, on Facebook, and uh, I think probably maybe a couple of people you know from Latin America, I don't know, and uh, various others. Um, so that might be you might want to actually answer some on the on our uh the video is available on fcct uh facebook page and youtube but i think the questions are all on facebook um i will uh maybe ask one um one more question that relates to thailand which is from uh james marshall who says do you think thailand has ever had true democracy <laughs> That that's the answer. The laugh. <laughs> After we can leave it at that. And you, we were going to ask you about Phuket's sandbox. I mean, clearly, in some ways, you know, this economy is melting down. Um, COVID, uh, the protests, people angry, frustrated, uh, vaccines. Um, you've had first experience, first-hand experience of uh, something that is desperately trying to get off the ground to, well, I think, save part of Thailand's flailing economy. What did you, what was your impression? What was your experience? I, um, my experience was really, uh, I, I would say I'm impressed by the system. And I, you know, a, a, bit of, a bit of hiccups, you know, when you try to get the COE, you know, um, from the government. Uh, from the embassies abroad, I think the system could be improved. Uh, um, but once arrived in Phuket, um, it's quite smooth operation. Um, everything was organized quick. And uh, from talking to people, um, you know, the and the restaurant or the driver and you know at the hotel as well, and people were quite appreciate the program because it was quite dead. I mean, economically speaking, you know, mm. that that it's uh, help. It helped, you know, uh, the locals so much, you know, and the fact that I'm just using the sandbox as as my office, so I I don't need 
I don't even need a beach, you know, so I just need to to be in the room and go out from time to time. And um, but I don't know about others who, who need to, to see the totally open city is impossible, you know, but for me, it suits me well. And I, I'm I'm happy to contribute uh, also to to the hotels and to the shops there, you know, mm. and, and I hope that it can, you know, open in more cities, yeah, because it's for us, you know, the, the incomers uh, like me or tourists, you know, it's been, we've been vaccinated and also with so many tests, you know, <laughs> uh, so many tests uh, uh, during, you know, so, you know, so, um, uh, so I feel that, the, uh, I say the system was quite fine. Also the test in Phuket is also very well, well, uh, will run. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, maybe this is a small measure that could help save part of Thailand's tourism economy. Um, but we should uh, we should wind up. Uh, I just wanted to ask, maybe if I can, one more from. It's from Latin America. I'm not quite sure where. It could be Colombia. But I felt that since we have quite a few people watching from Latin America, we should ask. Uh, uh, this is from Jose Luis. Aguilera Gutierrez, um, who wanted to know Gutierrez, whether, yeah. even with your earlier work as well, but uh, now, you know, you've made a film in, in Latin America, uh, whether these literary currents like magic realism, you know, actually relate to your earlier work as well. Like, actually, when you look back on your work, you you actually developed your own magic realism, um, but it does remind you of some of the the um, Latin American literary traditions uh, of magic realism and whether that kind of was a spoke to yes. you. It, it, it could be, but uh, unconsciously, because I, 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 of course, aware of the magic realism in Marquez and others. And, but uh, I think when watching the film, I just realized, you know, at the screening, you know, at the the river scene, the stream scene that Kong mentioned, I think that that one, I was like, oh, that's a link, you know, there could be a link to that. But during the making, no. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So I'd, I'd like to um, wrap up uh, with a, a huge thanks for spending so much time with us and to remind uh, viewers about uh, the exhibition, which I guess you could make an inquiry to um, uh, 100 Tonson. Uh, but I, it will actually be open at some point. You've got six months, right? So there's a good right. chance that, yeah. And uh, that um, uh, there will be the video of this uh, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and we hope maybe one day we can screen your film at the club, uh, even though that's not a big screen cinema. And um, to remind people that we are having a very interesting uh, panel tomorrow night. Um, the convener of that, Vincent Vidget Vatican Kunjo, says, if you have a question to put to these good Samaritans tomorrow night, please uh, uh, let us know. Um, mm -hmm you have anything you'd like to ask these people who are all helping? Uh... Oh, no, because I, I'm also aware of the, the good work that they're doing. Um, I, I and a group of friends also contribute to to that. Uh, and and that that's, that's another story, actually, to talk about, you know, test kits and about the price of them and also all these issues, you know, that, that you know, I'm, I'm dealing with it also on a daily basis, you know, um, with, with, with Maybe our, that will, our, yeah. Will that crop up if you do something with the footage of uh, what you've been taking about protests in Thailand in this period? This all sort of converges, perhaps? Mm. Yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a continuous uh, it's a I think yeah you're right it's the same story 
you know. Well, something big's going to come out of this then, we hope. Yes, so I, yeah, I just want to say, you know, it's, it's you know, um, it's, it's, it's the time, you know, it's a time where, where you really need to, to think about our leaders, you know, think about if there's a war or if there's another natural disaster, or, you know, do you think you can trust these people? You think they're going to save us? You know, so get your answer and then you, you know what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. And, and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so um, I, I just want to, to say that there's, I don't know if you feel the same, but there's a lot of hope for me because, because I feel that this system of repression is fighting with, with something, uh, I don't know in English, uh, unwinnable or unconquerable, which, which is time and, uh, and the freshness of the mind, you know, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. So, so that's why I think there, there's a big reason for hope. Yeah. I think that's a, a great message of hope. Actually, it's a it's a very mixed yeah. message, but it's not all bleak. <laughs> yeah, and you do what you can do. You know, like a filmmaker, you do what you, you something about images and about storytelling. So, yeah. so something good does come out of it, or if you make it happen. Right, right. So. Well, on that, yeah, I but, think on. Yeah. No, no. I just want to end with thank you. You know, thank you so much for make me revisiting those memories in Colombia. You know, and, and, <laughs> and get lightly grilled. By <laughs> us. With with pleasure. <laughs> well, you've been very patient, extremely articulate, very inspiring. I hope a lot of young filmmakers, uh, people of all walks of life, saw this. And Gong, your 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 questions and your insights were fantastic. Um, really, we should have asked you more about uh, drawing on those decades of uh, study of Thai film. Um, but uh, we do. I should say to everyone viewing, just, we this was knocked out of the water by the pandemic, but. Kong had launched a monthly film event at the Foreign Correspondence Club showing gems from Thai cinematic history and was we were just about to launch on Cold War era, um, which is a very interesting period, uh, and Kong had, had very carefully chosen clips from various films. We will do that, right, Kong, after, um, after yes. everything... Len, is the work of the archive, uh, of the archivists at the archive, actually. Yeah. I'm just presenting them. Well, and hopefully yes, so that we, can, we can get to do that program very soon. Mm. Yes, and you can, that... you are allowed to. Sorry, go on. Oh, sorry, I, I'm curious. Was that a feature film or documentary? Uh, um, uh, newsreel footage and some documentaries. Actually, you can you can look at some of them on our YouTube channel. There's a, I think there's a, it's a Cold War playlist. So news footage, uh, propaganda film, and uses uses films, and, and some yeah, films. mind you, you're going to carefully curate them, so it's still worth people like seeing your program when you put it on. Yes, but yes, you can yes. you can promote. I mean, incredible uh, historic Thai films, uh, both documentary and feature, on the Thai Film Archive website or its YouTube, right? Uh, it's it's a YouTube channel. Is a YouTube and channel free of charge, and some of it's subtitled. Yes, yes, yes. Many of them are subtitles, really? and, and, yeah. and I hope to put together a program for for the FCCT, and maybe I invite the archivists, some of the archivists from the archive, to speak about them. Well, that's what we're hoping to do. So do watch when we reopen, and we will, exactly. and we'll be back, and Thailand will be back in business. Yes. But life is normal again. <laughs> That's right. And we hope there will be a new Apichat Pong uh, film or documentary or hybrid, whatever it is. And I'd, I'd really like to thank Dave Foster and Jayen Media tonight 
for a really great um, uh, production there with uh, all those photographs provided by Abhijit Prong's team and uh, and also to remind viewers, tomorrow night, Good Samaritans, next week, Afghanistan, and uh, we'll con and soon a another Myanmar program. And to remind you, please, if you like this program tonight and the programs we've been doing, do think about donating. Even, even 500 baht, uh, the details are on our website and will be shown again on this screen. Um, we're having a very hard time with the lockdown and we're bringing these programs free and a lot of us work ceaselessly on these programs. So if you do appreciate it, please donate. And also you can donate to Myanmar Media. Uh, we have a special fund for that as well to support media with various programs. So uh, those details are available on Facebook. And uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for watching and some great questions and really apologies we couldn't get to them all, but there were so many. Um, I hope you do some sort of talk again, Kunjo. Uh, you obviously have a lot yes, to say. Likewise. Thank you so much, Gong and Gwen and Dev. Yeah. You know. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Gong. Good night. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah.